Hi there. Today we'll be discussing the daily challenges every IT ops and security team faces when trying to achieve secured server configurations. The Center for Internet Security is a nonprofit entity that develops best practices when it comes to cybersecurity. Its recommendations are considered to be the gold standard for building your organization's security policy. CIS recommendations, also known as the CIS controls, are a set of 20 guidelines to establish a secured IT network. Among all of the 20 controls, the first five are considered mandatory in every organization's cybersecurity program. The third control centers around operating systems, software, and network hardening. The CIS third control relies on the CIS benchmarks, a set of rules established to make every software and hardware in the organization secured when it comes to configuration settings. These rules constantly update as new vulnerabilities and attack vectors are discovered. Today, we'll focus on changing server configurations in order to achieve hardened server infrastructure. The need to change configurations lies in the fact that when delivered from manufacturer or reseller, the operating system is configured by default to provide as much functionality as possible. High functionality defaults often don't comply with security standards. That being said, deploying configuration settings that will address both needs without compromising either of them is extremely difficult. There are four phases in the process of achieving secured server configurations. Each phase is fundamental and cannot be avoided. Approaching server hardening missions with a manual approach or via native configuration management tools such as GPO and SSCM comes with extensive challenges at every phase. We'll go through each phase and the challenges that arises from it when not using automated tools. The first phase is to define your server security policy. Security policies should vary according to the server's role. An organization's server security policy is part of the organization's overall security policy. When defining the server security policy, the following needs to be taken into consideration. First, the external regulatory mandates and industry standards the organization must abide. Second, the organization's own internal requirements. Third, the specific server role or environment the security policy is intended to protect. And lastly, general best practices adopted by the company, such as CIS benchmarks. The challenges in addressing setting security policies manually lies in the fact that most organizations require multiple policies to address their different environment's requirements. Different policies have different impact on each environment. In order to define new policies, a thorough understanding of each policy impact on each environment is required. And that requires a broad impact analysis, testing, implementation, documentation, and tracking. Applying all of these demands manually is a tremendous burden. The second phase is to implement your policies in your production environment. Implementing server security policies is the responsibility of the IT operations team. Their main effort is to change configuration settings so that configurations will address the security policy. The main challenge and concern of IT is to address the security policy on one hand, but make sure the server production is not harmed as a result of it on the other. This balance is complex to achieve, and often IT prefers to neglect security in order to make sure that production won't be harmed. In order to achieve both, research needs to be done regarding the potential impact of every configuration change on server operation, taking into consideration every application installed on each server and every service needed for the server to work. This impact analysis is done via testing and lab environments set up to best replicate the production environment. This procedure is obviously costly and labor intensive. There are native configuration management tools such as GPO and SSCM, as well as manual methods for deploying a basic security policy. But when it comes to implementing more than one security policy across an organization's various server environments, they don't offer a good solution for the long testing hours 
and inordinate manual work required to prevent outages. The third phase is to ensure continued compliance with the security policies and report on policy violation. Ensuring that servers remain properly hardened is extremely critical, both from a compliance perspective, avoiding special preparations before an audit and remediation work afterward, and from a security perspective. Servers that do not remain hardened enable attackers to gain access to them by disabling policies and utilizing the vulnerability to attack the rest of the system. Server security baseline drifts leave the organizations exposed to attacks. The challenge of the manual approach to maintain server hardening lies in the difficulty of protecting the baseline from convenient day-to-day -day changes, which may be expedient but unauthorized. Eventually, servers should be continually monitored to estimate what users and activities may pose a threat to the organization. The fourth and last phase is to implement a change management procedure and enforce policies by server role. Vulnerabilities, benchmarks, and best practices constantly evolve. Every change made in one of them needs to be addressed by the security policy, meaning that almost every vulnerability, benchmark, or best practice update will lead to security policy changes and configuration changes that need to be implemented. Furthermore, Every IT infrastructure change, such as installation of new applications or software or change in server role, will need a special consideration and possible modification of the server security policy. As mentioned before, every security policy change requires lab testing, so whenever one of the above occurs, well, you got the idea. IT teams must restart all the manual policy testing and implementation processes performing the extremely complex, frustrating, costly, and labor-intensive procedure all over again. In conclusion, although deploying server configurations with good security properties is mandatory to achieve hardened and attack-resilient servers, it's easier said than done. Approaching this task with either a manual approach or with native manual tools will make this process complex, costly, labor-intensive, and inefficient, with a lot of room for mistakes that will lead to either production damage or security vulnerabilities. So, what is the answer, you may ask in frustration? Well, the best answer for this problem is using automated tools that will save you work, money, headache, and most importantly, will keep you resilient to attacks without harming production. <laughs> Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-